immortal tale, The Hand. It was raining. The date was August 31st, as I remember. And I had just heard that Sir John Rowell and his daughter had leased a villa here at Juan Le Pin for the winter. I hadn't seen Sir John since I had been in London four years ago. Naturally, I was anxious to see my father's old friend. I walked across the sands in the pouring rain to the lonely house on the cliff which he had leased. I remember wondering at that time why any man would choose such an isolated and cheerless spot. But then my taste for his villa might have been dulled by the constant fall of the rain and the dreary, overcast skies. I knocked on the door and then waited. It seems I waited some time before his Arabian servant... Yes? Uh, is Sir John Rowell in? Who is calling, please? Mr. Lansing from London. Mr. Dennis Lansing the second. Come in, please. Oh, thank you. I don't see why you have to rent this place for the entire year, Father. It's depressing. Please to be seated, sir. I announce you. Thank you. Well, perhaps I have reasons of my own, Phyllis. Oh, I don't doubt it. But there would have been a million places in England which would have served your purpose just as well, I'm sure. Mr. Dennis Lansing, the second to see you, Sir John. Dennis Lansing? Show him right in, Kiara. Show him right in. Another one of your head-hunting friends, you'll Dad. You'll see, Phyllis, you'll see. Oh, Sir John. Well, come in, my boy. Come in, let's have a look at you. Well, well, you've grown up since I last saw you. Oh, the inevitable result of years, sir. <laughs> well, I, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Lady Phyllis. Oh, how do you do? Hello. Well, do I look like a headhunter? Oh. Uh. Not in the least. Phyllis, Phyllis, stop flirting with the young man. Go upstairs and change for dinner. Even in this villa, you can't expect to come to the table in that dress. Oh, Father, really, the first time I've had a chance to be amused, I'm sent out of the room. Well, have plenty of chance to talk to Dennis later on. Oh, uh, you'll stay to dinner, won't you, sir? I'd be delighted. I'll see you then, Mr. Lansing. Yes, indeed. Well, what are you doing in this part of France? Is your father with you? Well, the family's in England. I'm vacationing here for two weeks. In a pension near the casino. Pension? Why don't you stay with us? Oh, really, Sir John, I wouldn't think of... Why wouldn't you? I insist on it. Yes, I insist on it. Kiara, Kiara. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like you to pick up Mr. Lansing's luggage after dinner. Yes, sir. And uh, at whose pension are you staying? Madame Corvée's. Madame Corvée's, oh. And uh, Kiara. Yes, sir. Uh, prepare the left wing for Mr. Lansing tonight. He'll be staying with us. Yes, sir. We'll do it, sir. Well, how's the hunting going, Sir John? Famously, famously. Phyllis and I just came back from India, as a matter of fact. I hear. Uh, tell me, Dennis, sir, uh, have you ever seen any of my trophies? Oh, no, I haven't, sir, but I've heard my father talk about them. Well, you have a great store, great treat in store for you. <laughs> I fixed up the back room in, the, in this villa as a trophy closet. Would you like to see it? Yes, as a matter of fact, I would very much. Well, come along, then. We'll have just time enough before dinner. Ah, this is the room. Well, let me light a candle first. Ah, there. That'll do it. Hmm. Yes, you have quite a collection here. Nice looking lion's head in the corner, eh? Oh, that's a beauty. Yes, I got that elk in the north last winter. What a tremendous spread of antlers. Yes. You know, Dennis, it, it took only one shot to pin it down. Oh, fancy shooting, Sir John. Yes, record shooting under the circumstances. And what's under this cover? No. Don't look there, Dennis. Oh, what? What in heaven's name? Why, it's a human hand. I... I haven't restricted my zeal for hunting to the animal kingdom, as you no doubt realize. Yes, so I see. Oh, it's horrible looking. You should have seen the man it belonged to. Well, I, I didn't mean to pry, sir. I realize that, Dennis, but no harm's done. You would have seen it sooner or later. It belonged to an enemy of mine, a man I met on one of my many travels. But how did you get the hand, sir? Are you sure you're interested, Dennis? Well, yes. That, that is, if you feel like telling me about it. I don't mind. His name is Magog, the head of a fanatical cult. My wife met him on one of our journeys. He fascinated her. He talked her into killing herself in order to destroy her earthly body and liberate her soul. My father once told me something of all this. Yes, it was 
quite a scandal in London at the time. She wrapped herself in old oil rags. He gave her the flame in order to set those rags on fire. Oh, I hadn't realized that she died suffering horribly while he chanted black magic over her burning flesh. My daughter Phyllis was only ten then. Well, didn't they jail this man, McGord? They couldn't find him. He left the country. But I found him. I hunted the four corners of the earth for him. Just as I've hunted for wild beasts. And when you found him? I staked him to the wet earth and cut off his hand. And left him there? Yes. To die. But why have you got the hand chained to the wall? You probably won't believe me. But that hand is alive. Oh, nonsense, Sir Nonsense? John. It's not nonsense at all, Dennis. My life is safe only as long as that chain holds that hand. But how can a severed part of a body retain life? I wish I knew. Hmm. The dinner bell. Well, we'd better hurry down. Kiora hates to be kept waiting. He's quite a cook, you know. Doesn't want his food spoiled. Look! Sir John, the hand. I could have sworn it moved. Yes, it does. Frequently. Come along. And, oh, Dennis, don't say anything about the hand to, to Phyllis. She hates the thought of it. You have my word, sir. I won't mention the hand at all. Well, Dennis, what do you think of Kiora's cooking? Well, if this is any sample, Sir John, your man Kiora is the best cook in France. Oh, you haven't tasted anything yet, Dennis. Wait till Kiora makes one of his famous curry dishes. He's quite an expert on curry. Do you like curry? Well, at times I do. It's, it's a little peppery for my taste. Oh, don't say that to Father. It's sacrilegious. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Letter came just now, Sir John, for you, on the door. Another one, Kiora? Yes, sir, another one. I say, should move now. Phil, Dennis, will you excuse me? Uh, suppose you young people take your coffee in the parlor. Oh, of course, Father. I, uh, I will join you later. Kiora. Uh, yes, sir, Sir John. What time was this letter delivered? Oh, here, let me carry your coffee tray for you. Oh, thank you. Now, how does it happen that we've never met in London, Phyllis? Well, the last time I was in London, I was just coming out of Pigtail. Oh, I would have liked you in Pigtail. You're nice. Tell me more. No, honestly, here, sit down on the window seat and, and I'll tell you more. I love to sit on this seat and plaster my nose against the window when it's raining. Oh, I like rainy weather. Oh, so do I. Do you? Mm -hmm. Amazing. We like the same thing. You know, people who like the same thing ought to get married. Oh, silly. Oh, didn't I tell you? I'm going to marry you. You're awfully sure of yourself. Well, I once swore that the first woman who called me a headhunter would be my wife. You are nice. <laughs> you said that before. If you're going to be my wife, you'll have to broaden the scope of your conversation. You beast! 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 Dennis, it's father. Oh, what is it? I ain't know you live, but you're chained. Chained to the wall! And you won't break loose! Never, never, never! You won't break loose, you! Oh, the gods have that dreadful hand. No. Quickly, Dennis, to the trophy room back here. Well, oh, what's happening? You'll see. Uh, this, this way, to the left. I'm right behind you, dear. Oh, Father, Father, stop it. Stop it, darling. Oh, You'll only make beast, yourself ill. Beast, beast. Open that door, Dennis, quickly. We've got to get him out of that room. I'll strike you. I'll strike you again and again and again. Father, Father. Oh, Dennis. Sir John. Sir John. Let, Let me go, Dennis. Look. Look at it, Dennis. Look at the hand now. Look at it. It's moving. The fingers are grasping the air. It wants to grasp my throat. Oh, no, Father. Please come away from this room. Please, come Father, along. please. Come along now, Sir John. Come along. I, uh... Help me with him, Dennis. He's, he's fainting. Oh, Father. Phyllis. Phyllis. Oh, there. That's better. We'll have to carry him ourselves. There now, Sir John. Sir John. It's no use, Dennis. Every time Father goes into the trophy room, this happens. Every time he sees that hand, he has an actual physical fight with it. A fight with the hand? I've wanted him to get rid of that thing millions of times. He makes himself ill over it. It'll destroy him this way. Here, let me carry him to the living room. 
Can you manage? Yes, I can manage. I think we ought to call a doctor for him, Phyllis. He's in a self-hypnotized coma. Dr. Flaubert, he lives about a half mile down the road to the left. Good. Here now, Sir John, lie down here. Oh, I won't be long, Phyllis. Uh. Just let your father rest here on this sofa. There, he'll probably sleep until I get back. Dennis. Yes? Don't stay away too long, Dennis. I'm frightened of being alone in this uh. house. Which way do I turn to go to the doctor's? Well, uh. after you leave this house, turn to the left and walk straight down the road. Oh, about a quarter of a mile. It's not far. Oh, hurry, Dennis, please. I will. I'll be back shortly. Phyllis. Phyllis. The hand. The hand. Oh, please, Father, you mustn't think about it. The chain on the hand is unlocked. Unlocked? Oh, what's the difference? A hand can't run away, Father. Please, Phyllis, please. Lock the chain. Lock it. Go now. And lock it. All right, if you want me to, of course. Will you be all right alone here? Yes. Yes, quite all right. Oh, if only you hadn't sent Kiora into town. I'm so hot. Hot. No. No. Phyllis. Phyllis, help me. Help me. It's the hand. The hand. Coming for me. Crawling on the wall like a scorpion. Closer. Closer. Nearer. Nearer. It's coming for me. No. Here we are, Dr. Flaubert. Hey, the rest is dark. We thought Lord Raoul was waiting for us in the living room. Well, I thought so, too. Mm, it is a wet night. Wet night. Whoa. Whoa. This way, Doctor. Come along. You know, that's funny. There's no light. I left a light on in the parlor. Yeah. Perhaps Lord Raoul turned it off so he could sleep. Well, perhaps. Yes, perhaps. They do not answer. No, 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 they don't. Who is it? Who's out there? Phyllis, it's Dennis and Dr. Flaubert. Let us in. Dennis. Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Dennis' father's dead. Dead, he's been murdered. Murdered? Dr. Flaubert, my father's been choked to death by... by the hand. Where is he, my dear? Up the sofa in the living room. Come along, Doctor. You can take a look at him. I'll light a candle. Yeah. I'm frightened. So frightened, Dennis. Father asked me to go to the trophy room to be sure. A hand was locked safely to the wall. As soon as I left him alone, I heard Dad scream. When I came back, look, that's what I saw. Hey, let me examine him, and then... Here's a candle, Doctor. Hey, thank you. There, there, Phyllis, try to control yourself. You're safe now. Father, Father... Phyllis, Phyllis, now stop crying, my dear. It, it's so incredible, Dennis. A severed part of a human body being able to commit murder. Murder. Did you see the hand? No, I didn't. It, it was gone by the time I returned. And all the lights but that one candle near the window were out. Dr. Flaubert, <laughs> is it possible for that hand to be alive? Mm. Under ordinary circumstances, I would say no, Monsieur Lansing. But these are anything but ordinary circumstances. Then you admit it's possible for this hand to have done the murder. I admit nothing, monsieur. Only I must judge from the evidence which confronts me. And no human hand ever performed this murder. And look at the imprints on the neck of Lord Raoul. Skeleton imprints. The imprints of skeleton fingers. Then, then the hand is still loose in the house somewhere. Did you see the hand in the trophy room, Phyllis? I never got back there. <laughs> Oh, Kiora. I have brought your luggage back, my... Lord Raoul. Yes, Kiora. Lord Raoul is dead. I knew it. I knew it. I told him not to stay in this house. I could feel the danger around us. Yeah, could you indeed, Kiora? Perhaps you understand more of this than we do. No, it is pity. Lord Raoul was fine hunter. Tell me, Kiora. What was in that letter that Lord Raoul received this evening which threw him into such a panic? I do not know, Mr. Lansing. But well, where did it come from? I do not know that either. Yeah, this isn't the case for us to solve, Mr. Lansing. It is up to the police. Oh, not the police. Please, Doctor. It will only start an old scandal all over again. But, Mademoiselle... No, no, my father wouldn't have wanted it. The publicity over my mother's death ruined his life. 
He wouldn't want the old scandal repeated. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the papers, Phyllis. Dennis, my father wouldn't want it. But as long as his death is a mystery, your life is in danger. There's no mystery about it. My father was murdered by the hand. He always knew he'd die that way, always. The hand will remain in this house. I'm going as far away as I possibly can. The lady Phyllis is right, Monsieur Flaubert. How can you be so sure it will not follow her? I know more of East Indian magic than you do, Doctor. East Indian magic or not, as a doctor in charge of this case, I will have to report Lord Raoul's death to the authorities to make arrangements for his funeral. My father's body will be taken to England. Kiora knows exactly what to do. Yeah, nevertheless, I must make the report of his death. It is customary procedure here in France. An investigation will certainly follow in the morning. You make trouble for all of us, Dr. Flaubert. Yes, especially for you, Kiora. Bonsoir. Good evening, Doctor. Thank you. I do not think it is wise to stay in this house tonight, Lady Phyllis. Kiora's right, Phyllis. You can return with me to Madame Corvée's. And leave father here alone like this? But there's nothing more you can do for him, Phyllis. If black magic does exist, I can at least watch over him tonight. But Lady Phyllis... No, Kiora. I'm going to stay right here. If you both want to leave, you can. I won't leave you, Phyllis. If you want to stand watch, I'll stand with you. I make some coffee, Lady Phyllis, yes? Oh, yes, Kiora, if you please. Then I return to town and make arrangements for our immediate return to England. I don't know what I'd do without you, Kiora. Hmm. Maybe Kiora fix it so we leave before authorities come, yes? If you can, Kiora, I'd be so very grateful. It's so late, Phyllis. Why don't you try and sleep a while, dear? I'll stay awake and watch. Oh, if only I could sleep. Well, I can put out the candle in the window. If the room's dark, you'll find sleeping easier. No, Dennis. Or whatever you say. I wonder what's keeping Kiora so long. I don't know. I hope he's not in trouble. He's been gone over three hours. He won't be back till morning. Are you comfortable? Mm, yes, as comfortable as I... Listen. Hmm? Do you hear something strange? No. Listen carefully. It sounds like mice in the corner. Oh, yes, now that you mention it. Like mice or a scratching hand? You hear it now, don't you? Yes, I do, very plainly. Dennis, look on the windowsill. It's the hand, crawling like a scorpion towards my father, crawling. It's going toward the light. Dennis, don't, don't you, don't touch it. Be quiet, Phyllis. Look at it, look at it. What? It's going to try and turn off the light. I've got to grab it. The light, Dennis, the light. I've got it. Light the candles, Phyllis, hurry. I'll light them, hang on to it. Just hold it until I get a taper. What? Oh, there. There. Now we can see. Look. Look at it. Yes, just what I thought. A skeleton hand completely without life attached to a stick. You mean then somebody... Yes, somebody stole the hand, attached it to a stick, and is trying to frighten us. But why, Dennison? Who murdered father? That's something we'll find out rather soon. <laughs> Help, Mr. Lansing! Help! It's Kiora outside. Calling to help quickly, Dennis. Out the front door. Mr. Lansing! Mr. Lansing! Help me with this man! Stay back, Phyllis. Hold on to Kiora. I'll help me. Go! Oh, I've got him. Stop him. I've got him. Dr. Flaubert. What are you doing here? Mr. Lansing, help me bring him into the house. You, you pay the gods heavily for this, Kiora. I, I... He's wounded. Yes, sir. I used... Knife on him, unfortunately. Bring him inside. Dennis, I don't understand. I what... think I'm beginning to. Take a seat, Kiora. Yes, sir, I've got him. Feet. <laughs> Nothing to be proud of. They are the feet of a dog. Close the door behind us, Phyllis. Here, we can put him down here. Yes, sir. You fool, Kiora. You oh, shall imprison your soul for it. That is too late, Monsieur Margot. Margot? My father hunted him down and left him to die long ago. Dennis, he can't be Margot. He is, though. He didn't die. He was staked to the ground, Phyllis, but managed to free himself. Kiora suspected the doctor from the first. That's quite right, Lady Phyllis. He kept writing letters to Lord Raoul. He, the only one near enough to drop letters on the door. When he leaves house this evening... I wait outside for him to return. 
I hide in bushes. I see him and skeleton hand outside window. Then I see light go out inside. Then I grabbed him. And a good thing you did, too. Uh, yes, good. Now you'd all be dead. Dead. Paying for the crime of cutting off my hand. My hand. My hand was cut off. And I was left to die. But, Kiorg, Dennis, he has a hand. Yes, Lady Phyllis. Artificial one. Made of wax. I shall get even with you, too. I... <laughs> Mm -hmm. He will pay in another world for the crime he committed tonight. I go get the police, Lady Phyllis. Yes, yes Kiora, if you will. I still don't understand how Kiora knew that Dr. Flaubert was really my god. The East Indian has a strange but almost infallible second sense. Yes, I'm afraid they have, Dennis. A very strange second sense. Phyllis and I waited in front of the fireplace for two hours. And finally, Kiora and the authorities arrived. I told them the entire story, as incredible as it sounded, and was granted permission to return Lord Rowell's body to England. Dennis, can we really go back to England now? I'll be so glad to get home. Oh, so will I, dear. Well, I'm not quite sure what my family will say about my traveling back in the company of a strange man. Oh, stuffy, are they? <laughs> a little bit. Well, they won't have to worry. We're going to be married just as soon as I have you safely home again. Oh, Dennis, my dear. My darling. <laughs> Pardon, you may need good housekeeper. Cook, Mr. Lansing. <laughs> Kiora make very good Indian curry. Good, Kiora. You're hurt. I can see right now, Phyllis, I'll be eating Indian curry for the rest of my life. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought to you the immortal tale, The Hand. Bellkeeper, hold the bell. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.